ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Class Farm. We're going to take a rundown. We'll do some, we talked about doing lumber in the last episode. I know we did a little bit. We're going to head down there and do some stuff. Uh, now, I did, the Straw Harvest DLC has finally arrived, for those of you that were desperately waiting for it. I can see in the future having a uh, Premios, or Premos, Primos, whatever, however you pronounce it, the 5,000. Um, because we do grow crops that produce um, straw. And as of, you know, so far we've just been tossing these crops into the garbage, but it would be kind of wise of us to maybe rent a Premos or Primos. <laughs> I think it's Primos. Um, and use that like we could just get our fields done. Get the, you know, uh, the beer taken care of and then, you know, use that uh, Primos to... turn our straw into pellets and then we can sell it for a profit um, so we're going to look into doing that next year but uh, this year I think we'll just rent it I don't think we're going to buy the equipment but we'll just rent it and uh, lease it and then use it for our after farm cleanup I'm not planning on basing the whole economy on doing pellets but I definitely see selling pellets so, anyway, I thought I'd share that with you. All right, we've arrived. And we're going to go ahead and grab... Let's see, what are we doing today? Well, I've been chainsawing things down by hand. So we'll go ahead back and cut a couple trees, and we'll come back and pull the equipment to process it. But this is where we've started... Um, I'd rather move towards the back than the front. We're going to have a lot of trees back here in a couple of years. Maybe we'll work this area here. I don't want to cut these down yet. These are still little. Are those ours? Do we grow them? No, these are the ones that we've been growing. I think they've gotten a little bit taller, but maybe not. They're hard to see. I don't know if you guys can even really see those. They're They're, <laughs> they're so small. Uh, we're going for the big trees today. We're not going to cut down any, like, half growth. I'm going to get the largest trees. Because those other ones will grow up next year. We'll get the big ones. Those. Those big ones. Hello. Oh, Lord. There we go. The mouse, my mouse roller is not working so good on my mouse. I love the way it wedges that little piece out. <laughs> it's funny, the trees make absolutely no sound in this game when they go down. There we go. So yeah, there's been a lot of tree cutting going on in my neighborhood. For those of you that did not see the Facebook announcement or don't really watch Twitch or anything uh, last week, we had a uh, F1, which is not a huge tornado, but we had a F1 tornado uh, slide on through my neighborhood. Uh, it was pretty scary. Uh, and just up the road from where I live, uh, the entire, that's where the tornado actually touched down. And there were trees down everywhere and roofs ripped off houses. And thankfully it was only an F1. So only one person got injured. Nobody got killed. Uh, but it was a pretty intense moment. Um, and it definitely, I've heard one other tornado in my life, uh, and yeah, it sounds, it does sound exactly like a freight train going through. Um, it's pretty terrifying. Thankfully, everybody was okay. Uh, my kids were at their mom's, and I called uh, my ex-wife and said, you know, you need to get those kids down. A, you know, unfortunately, she doesn't have a, a basement in her house, so I said, listen, like you, you need to get those kids down. Uh, Sorry if the mic's quiet. Uh, you need to get. You guys need to get down the basement. Like, go to your neighbor's house and knock. You can't. You can't let this go. Like, you need to go now, and you know, find somewhere to shelter because you know your house is not going to be enough. So she went over to the neighbor's house and was like, "I'm so sorry to bother you, but you know, 
There's a tornado coming. So. But, uh, yeah, that was scary. I'm trying to think if there's any other exciting news. That's about it. The coronavirus is still going. We're all still stuck at home. Uh, I've had absolutely no work, which, you know, obviously there's, I shouldn't be going out anyway, but I'm just... It's a little frightening when there's nothing, you know, no income. Except for impossible. Because I run my company my own way, I don't even know if I'm going to get the stimulus check. I may, I may not. So, it's a little frightening. But, what can you do? What can you do? Alright, that looks good. Alright, so I'm going to keep doing this. I'll catch up with you guys when I start to load them. We'll take a look at the loading process, but I'm going to be taking all down all these taller trees. Uh, we'll leave the shorter ones. But we need to get some stock for next year's pallets. So... I'll be back. All right, so we're in the equipment deployment stage of our tree cutting. We'll take our semi truck. Well, it's not really a semi, is it? But our trucky truck back to the location and get these trees. I've done five trees. Should be plenty of wood. Um, there they are. But I wanted to wait for a little bit till the next next set grew up. So actually, we're gonna do it this way. Let's cross the road. <laughs> there we go. And let's go ahead and grab the front loader. All right, we are heading into the backwoods with our grabber. We will have to knock these stumps down eventually. I'll we'll probably do that today, too. This should be enough wood to keep us for the next year of pallets, though. Um, I don't want to... Like, we, I want to let some of those tr other trees get larger. I don't know. Now, the interesting thing is I don't know if the pre-growth trees... Uh, if you can't... If they will... Um, Like, if the ones that are already on the map, do they grow more, or do they stay at the height that they're at? I, I think that they grow, but I could be wrong about that. Wouldn't that be a conundrum? We'd still get wood out of them, but they're definitely not as valuable. Look at the size of this, these trees, though. This, this one was a huge one. That one that's going across the road, the second tree right behind me. That Look how long that tree is. It's twice the size of these other trees. Freaking huge. All right, so it's if you don't have the bio belts grabber, these are this is the best grabber for trees in the game. There we go. It appears I've made my logs just a hair too long, though they can dangle off the back, but it's a little dangerous for the road trip. <laughs> oh well. Let it fall. Oh my gosh. It's like totally stuck to the back of the truck. And I still didn't get it on all the way. I'm going to have to push that on. Like a shovel. Ta da! Oh boy, and so it goes. Uh, but yeah, I think that's it for this year. Hopefully for next year too. We'll have to see how many pallets we use and what's left over. All right, this one's a little better cut. Still a little bit long though, but unfortunately we can't. It's like the right.
I think next time I might do a telehandler instead of a front loader. I don't know. We'll see. So I'm do that. Ta da! Oh, come on. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Urgh! The lumber, this game, this, the physics in this game with for lumber are just... It's probably, it's actually I, funny, I played a lumberjack game uh, and I had to end up taking the review off of YouTube because the game was just so bad. Uh, so I guess I can't really complain about this because at least this has workable physics. Because that game was terrible. Now, I'm still like, waiting for Lumberjack Dynasty from the people that made Farmer's Dynasty. And they've also got this medieval dynasty that they're supposedly working on. But I, they, they told me they were going to send it to me. And then I never heard anything more from them. So I just, I actually probably should email them and ask them what's going on. Oh, thank you, Violet. Yes, Violet. Gromit is cute. I'm doing this one by hand. He trusts you with his body. That sounds a little weird. I know, I know. Uh, we have an issue. Unfortunately, Gromit likes to nip John. He's not... John is, uh, you know, seven years old, and he's little, and he's wiggly. And Gromit just doesn't know what to do with him. And so he nipped him last night. Not hard. It wasn't like a mean bite. It was just kind of like... I know, it's because of its allergens. Uh, but he nipped him. And it wasn't a hard bite. Like I said, it was just like a little bit of like a... Yeah, he was wagging his tail and he was playing, but he just he doesn't know what to do with John. He's kind of like, are you a puppy? Like, can I play with you? Unfortunately, you know, and John doesn't feel afraid of him. It wasn't like a, a vicious, like, snarling type situation. It was just a, he was just a little playful nip, but he's just big and he doesn't know what to do with John. Yeah, he is a puppy. He'll learn. But in the meantime, I'm going to get chewed out from my ex-wife. <laughs> uh, what happened to his eye? Uh, the dog nipped him. What do you mean he nipped him? He's a puppy. They play. They didn't, they didn't bite him. It wasn't like he was like viciously biting his face. But you have to be careful. Dogs don't understand that how soft faces are. They just, they don't, they nip each other. And that's how they, they communicate and play. Yeah. Right. Because he's not a bitey dog. But he does, he is, a, he is part, you know, border collie. And that's how they, they, they corral by nipping. Well, he's much less than he is now. I mean, he's much less now than he was. Ugh. I will say that this this bio belts thing really does help. Uh, I I think the front loader setup or telehandler, the front loader really, because the front loader's got the wow. Did I not cut this piece? Oh, that is way too long. Um, <laughs> I thought I had it, but. Um, the front loader to me is the easiest way to load. Um, logs onto a trailer. I mean, you can, there are other ways to do it, or like the cranes and stuff, but those just, they're really hard to operate. And they always end up dropping the logs, and I get frustrated with those. So I just, I end up just using this because it's, it's, it might take a little bit longer. If you're really good with a crane, you might be able to, to outdo me. But this is, it just works. I don't have the issues, the weird, like, physics issues that I have using the other types. So this is a little different. In fact, th you know, this used to work even better in 17, and now it's still a little soft on the handling. But it's workable. I, that's, I guess that's what I'm saying. I've Compared to some of the other quote-unquote lumber games that I've played out there, this one's actually workable. Now, Spin Tires does... A, it does it oddly, or Mud Runner. It does it in an odd way, but it works. Um, 
With Mudrunner, you only have to load three logs, and then you have a full trailer. But that won't work for this game, because you're actually dealing with material. So, anyway. All right, I'm going to keep loading. I'll see you in a minute. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am heading to the lumber mill. <laughs> My wife is crashing her truck, and she's playing Euro Truck. <laughs> what kind of truck are you driving, babe? I had engine failure. Yo, you crashed that hard that you had engine failure? Oh, geez. My wife is crashing her way through uh, Lithuania right now. Um, no, I didn't crash. My engine stole because it's broken. Well, it's broken because you crashed. <laughs> no, it's broken actually because a police car will move out the way. Oh, okay. <laughs> She's broken because a police car, quote unquote, wouldn't move out her way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And an incident with a concrete barrier. <laughs> oh, Lord. That's why she's not allowed to drive any of the farm trucks. <laughs> I did. She drew my... She, you did fine on my lawn tractor. You're right. Hey, I just noticed that this logging truck has man-lion decorations on the windows. It's actually pretty cool. Very fancy. It's very fancy, dear. <sighs> anyway, so we are on our way back to the log making station here. Um, I don't, like I said, this probably will be enough wood for next year. Um, since we didn't even go through all the wood that we cut down this year. But I think we did take two or three trailer loads. So we'll have to see how this works. But I want to let those trees grow some more uh, before I cut any more down. I've cut down pretty much all of the really tall trees. And so now it's time to kind of let the forest regenerate so we're heading back now and we'll go ahead and unload these and uh, I think maybe that'll be it but well you know what this is what I'm going to be doing for the next couple days so I probably will just um, let some time pass by I might even meet you on the other side of the winter or we'll meet at the beginning of winter because there's really not that much to do now now that we've got uh, through the season uh, pretty much all the heavy farming is done, so I'm going to have to do some off-camera playing and get the farm ready for the next year. Though, I think when the crops spring, we'll have uh, we'll have our oilseed radish popping up here before the end of this month, and we'll do some cultivating and, and work there. But um, I really don't want to do too much more in the forestry section simply because um, I just don't want to decimate the trees that are still, you know, they could have a lot more growth on them, which would equal a lot more pallets rather than taking them uh, down early. So anyway, um, I know this is probably a shorter episode than normal, but let's go ahead and unload this truck and then we'll call it a night. Um, and then uh, once again, I'll see you once we're ready to do the cultivation on the fields and really move into the next season because there's not gonna be too much to do in the winter. So uh, here we are at the lumber facility and uh, there's, I think we need to bring that guy. Oh! I'm one to talk, huh? Uh, nothing. I might, I might have, might have turned the corner a little too fast with this log truck. Right. And it's, um, it needs some help. It's gonna, I'm gonna give it a little help here. Thankfully, it happened right next to my front loader. Oh, I gotta show my wife. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. You're a great driver. No, nothing at all. I th you're an excellent driver and definitely allowed to drive the farm equipment. Oh, jeez. It's too heavy, Babs. I can't flip it. Well, that you're a wonderful woman. Terrible driver? For frig's sake. Oh, man. Um, is, uh, humble pie. Pride cometh before the fall. Karma. Instant karma. 
That's what they call that. <laughs> Literally instant karma. I wish. I, I hear you getting tickets, so don't want, you know. All right. Uh huh. <sighs> no, I believe you. I do. I believe you. Yeah. See, this downside too is I, I traded all. I had those big class, the class Torian, uh, like the really big front loader, over at the brewery, and I traded it in for a smaller one because I didn't need it at the brewery. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna raise it there, and I gotta go grab the other one, and we're gonna lift it the rest of the way. Oh lordy, I don't think I have. Let me go through. Yeah, see, so you know, I traded that in for a smaller one. So. Pride cometh before the fall. <laughs> now, I wish, I, now I wish you were on this map with me because it would I really could use a second hand flipping this thing over. <laughs> she just shrugs her shoulders at me. Too bad, Alpha. Oh, God, the smug look I'm getting right now. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Did not realize it was that top heavy. Who, who's that? Alfie! Oh, I miss you, Alfie. Alfie's driving the truck? Oh, boy. Oh. oh, the fork stuck in the log and then pulled it over. Shoot. Oh, I, I deserve that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to get this, as Emily would say, fridging truck over. I wonder if I, you know what I'm going to try to do? I'm going to, I'm going to have the, I'm going to run the hydraulics, which is this. <laughs> what, did he hurt you? Oh. What? You guys, okay, you're going to have to start teaching him not to nip because he's that's a little too much. Oh! That's not good. Teeth kisses are not good. Uh, come on! Come on! Wrestle! Okay, okay, okay. Let's see. I'm going to lose all these logs. Oh, I got the truck over, but I haven't gotten the trailer over yet. Oh. Did you guys think that we, this would turn into a, uh, an episode of tractor wrestling? Yes. I don't know how I'm going to flip this, this pallet trailer over, though, or the log trailer over. It's really, now it's really jammed in, too. Uh, if I can get it, I need to get it out of this area. Come on. Almost. Ugh. Frig sickles. Come on. Okay, almost. See what's doing though is it's getting hooked under the fork. So it's like Oh, that's good. That's good. I can get a second motion here. Da ta da! I did it! Wow. <laughs> and no da no equipment was damaged in any way, shape, or form. No tractors were hurt during this operation. Okay. So now we need to grab this guy. We're gonna we're gonna kind of bump this around though, because I need to be able to hitch it. So we're gonna see if we can't push this around or push it out. Maybe there we go. Come on. Push. Come on, you can do it. There we go. That should be far enough off for the truck to pick it up. Well, that turned into a little adventure, or Miss Adventure, Mrs. Adventure, however you want to go. And now we're going to grab the log grappler, 
because we're gonna unload this. So, well, that was fun. <laughs> I blame it on you, Babs. I don't know, just cause. Yes, no, it was because you're cute, and then seeing you on camera while I'm trying to drive and just paying attention to you made me crash. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. How is it I managed to drive without crashing when I look at you? You're not very nice, you know that? <laughs> I suppose I did. Okay, so we're going to come over here. We're going to unload these logs, and then we're going to move on. And um, I think that'll be it. You know, the other thing that we could do before this episode is completely over is we could um, we could also unload the... Because I have wood chips in there. I don't think there's a ton of wood chips, but we could... Well, no, we should wait, though, because this is going to be processing all night. So we'll let it finish processing, and then we'll grab the wood chips in the next exciting episode. We could even add a heater to our farm using wood chips. There we go. Yep. Here's the rule of thumb, just so you guys know. And this is actually a real physics thing. This is not a farm sim physics thing. When you have a vehicle and some of the weight or a lot of the weight, even like a third of the weight, is past the rear axles, like this here or a school bus, um you will actually cause the vehicle to roll over a lot easier. This is a known issue with uh, a lot of people like those Chevy 15-passenger uh, vans over the Fords and Dodges because both Ford and Dodge put the wheels in the center of the van, but Chevy put them at the back of the, the chassis. So basically what Ford and Dodge did was they took their 15-passenger their vans and they basically uh, took a 12-passenger van and extended it over the wheelbase, where Chevy actually redesigned their pickup or their truck um, to be to have a, the axle in a different position, uh, and so what happens is those Dodges, if you load them up in the back and the Fords, they are known to roll over if you're not careful. You have to make sure that you weight them properly, or they will roll. Same thing's true for a school bus. You don't want to have all the weight in the back. You got to have it towards the the middle or the front of the bus, and then you can put weight in the back. But you can't have a majority of the weight in the back. So what happened there was this truck has a lot of log hanging over the back. Enough of it, obviously, to make it tipsy. So, because we're not loaded very high. I mean, look, we're not even, we're below the red line. So we're, we're, we're safe as far as that's concerned. But we made the logs a little bit too long. And that weight has carried it over and flipped us over. So, um, all right. So we're going to go ahead and unload these without driving into the river after a successful rescue operation. Now, one thing I didn't think about, we should probably, and this is where I'm having the issue, uh, we need to lower this uh, tipper. Not tipper, but the our IT runner bed needs to come down, so we need to refasten that. And we're going to go ahead and start working that out. There we go. My wife is laughing at me still. Did you crash? Uh oh. What'd you do? What did you do? Like to like to lean one against the other? Oh, you were uh, knocking trucks around the parking lot. Oh, like a like a built like a bowling ball set, huh? <laughs> Poor truck. Oh, he's he's happy then, right? They put their they put their hazards on for a minute or two, make sure everything's okay, and then drive on, right? No harm done. <laughs> Little whiplash. <laughs> well, is there anywhere that you can stop nearby that has a, a repair garage? Yeah.
That'll do it. Well, we've done pretty well on the farm this year, so we're going to somewhat, and the season's not necessarily over, but we're going to end 500,000 plus. I think we had, once we were done with all of our purchases and stuff, we were in the $150,000 range, 200000 So we've had about $300,000 come in from our, our beer sales, and um, next year we're going to increase that because... Uh, we don't. We don't. We do. We are growing some hops next year, but I'm growing way more wheat and way more barley, and I will not be selling it. I sold the the. I think the wheat this year. So uh, we're going to be making malts and barley and wheat, and and um, you know we're going to have a, a decent crop come in so that we can make a lot of beer. So I think that we'll you know realistically be able to increase that at least twenty five percent. So I would say three hundred to maybe four hundred thousand dollars of business that way. Plus, we're going to lease the Premos um, uh, to take the straw from those because we didn't do anything with the straw this time. We just threw it out. Uh, we're going to actually take the straw next year and sell pellets to the local factory. So we're going to make some good money that way, too. And so we will be, uh, you know, maybe even I'm going to guesstimate probably 70 to $100,000 or more from that little venture. So we'll make some good money. Um, so it should be a uh, should be a good year next year. I'm, so my estimating total income is going to be about four to five hundred thousand dollars, possibly more. Uh, once we get to that place, hopefully we'll be able to buy another field. And um, I just once again, we could have bought one this year, but the field was five hundred thousand dollars. I didn't want to go through the whole winter with just five thousand dollars. And I don't want to. I think we're are we maxed out on loan? Let me see. I don't I don't think we have a loan, actually. Now that I think about it, I have to check every time I do this because I have so many different farms. No, there's no loan. So we could theoretically take a loan out, but there's no need to. I don't I don't want to take a loan out unless I have to. So um, so there we go. We're going to be able to make at least probably another 15 pallets of pallets, 10, 10 to 15 pallets full of pallets. And so we'll have some uh, decent amount of pallets for our beer next year. And once again, um, if we run into a limiting factor, we can always late in the season make more. Once again, we're not even in fall yet, and we're done with our production. So... We, if we need to make more pallets next year and extend it out, we can definitely do that. But we should have enough to start the year off right. And we're going to put that there. And I don't know how many it's going to make, but we'll take a look and make sure this thing's operating. It should be up and functioning. Outputs, wood chips. We have 35,000 wood chips. Yeah, we'll have a lot more after this. Sixty. We have 7% wood. Wow, that's crazy. This thing just takes so much wood. And no pallets as of yet. <laughs> okay. Wee Splash. Let's put our logging truck away after a nice swim in the logging pond. <laughs> My wife is giving me... Like, what are you doing, Arthur? So we got to drive this back down to the woods. And, um, and then we will grab our... Uh, What's that thing called? The uh, Unimog. And we'll bring our Unimog back home. And we'll call it a night. So we got all of our work done early today. So that means that my guy can go play video games for the rest of the day. And what do you think his favorite video game is? He, This guy, he loves uh, Baron C. That's his favorite video game. <laughs> He likes the, uh, what is it, the kids play Roblox. <laughs> it's his favorite game. He likes he likes Bilderberg. What's the name of that one that they play? I hate that. Ugh. Adopt Me or whatever. <laughs> I'll be back. All right, we've arrived at the woods at Shinery Krumbin. We're going to park our little truck here. And it's going to go right here. What a great truck. That has been so much better than the other one that we had before. And here's our... The Unimog... We're going to go back home with this. 
I love the Unimog. It's a fun truck. It's designed for stuff like this. And what's funny is I have the I have a, an RC Unimog. It's an older model. It's a um, 1960s model. Hey, Alpha. Yeah, babe. Do you actually crashed into a stone, or you're in Estonia? No, I'm just in Estonia. Oh, Estonia! <laughs> I got the finger. She's uh, she's driving to Estonia on this trip. So, what are you taking those wood panels? Excavator, that's right. Is there anything of it left after all the accidents, or is it uh, only 1% damaged? Um, oh, and I did have somebody ask me this the other day. The way the damage works in the game now, you have cargo damage, trailer damage, and truck damage. And um, as long as the cargo's not damaged, you get full payment. But if the cargo damage has damage on it. 3%? Yeah, they won't like that though. That's like a thousand dollars off. Yeah, it's not like my yeah. yeah, so in other words you made no money on this trip. <laughs> um, honey, with a forty percent damage on your truck, I think it's gonna be more than nine thousand dollars. <laughs> I think you're probably looking at like a twenty to thirty thousand dollar repair bill. <laughs> um Anyway, I've got the uh, I've got the Nokian wheels on my RC truck, so they look very similar to the whoa to the tires that are on this uh, truck. That's pretty cool. I would like to put heavier tires or s softer tires because the t Tamiya tires um, uh, for their for their CCO one chassis, uh, which are you know, pretty much they they have like a million different uh, vehicles based off the CCO one. They've got like Toyota Land Cruisers. And um, they've got a um, Isuzu like Trooper. They've got the Mercedes. Um, oh, what is it? There's a the Mercedes. Um, it's a, a modern off-road truck. It's real boxy looking. I can't think of the name. It's like an E500 or something like that. Uh, they've got two different Unimog models from the 70s and the 60s, and they all use the same CCO1 frame. They have different tires for them. They're all scale though, but the tires are like a really really hard compound rubber. Uh, they last forever for riding on cement trails and stuff like that. But if you try to go off-roading with the RC truck, it gets stuck really easily because the tires just don't grip. Um, they're not the, like the good tires like you have on the uh, crawlers. So I'd like to get a set of like small-scale crawler tires for it. But you're looking at like it's pretty crazy. You're looking at fifty dollars for a set of tires for one of those little trucks. So it's like twenty-five dollars per pair. So you, if you want to do all four tires, it's going to be fifty bucks. So I haven't done it yet because it's just I don't have the money, extra money to do that kind of stuff. Um, and most of the money that we have goes back into the channel, like computer repairs and stuff like that. So, um, but uh, it would be fun to do that someday and put like Nokian tires on that truck and really see how, uh, like actual soft tires and see how it does as far as climbing and stuff because it probably would improve greatly. So, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, have a great night. Be sure to subscribe, thumbs up, boys help, and we'll see you on the next exciting episode of Kloss Farm. Bye.